it's your girl Shantan Cole and I'm back with another great video. So if you're new here, thank you for watching and I hopefully you'll learn something in this video that'll help you get a promotion and you will subscribe and follow to see what else I have in store for you. This is a big one because your girl just got promoted at work and I now work from home and it is wonderful, I'm telling you. So I'm going to be giving you 10 steps on how you can get a promotion this year in the next couple of months. It's that attainable. I started off working in banking my first job at a credit union or in banking altogether. It's been over a year now, a year and a couple of months. And all that time I worked as a teller, basically a universal teller. And now I am in digital services with my company and I get to work from home and I love it. So here's how I got promoted and how you can get promoted as well. So number one, I would say be professional. And by being professional, I mean talking professional and dressing professional. So especially if you have to go in the office, um, you should always look professional. Don't come in there with cleavage all out. Don't go in there with really tight clothes on or um, don't go in there, guys. If your clothes is looking wrinkled, you may need to iron those or put them in the dryer real quick. Um, always dress the part. Try to look neat and clean, shaven, hair looking nice. Don't go in there with wet hair. All those things. Definitely be professional. People don't want to hear your gossip, your business. Um, especially in the middle of your shift, you're talking about those things. That's very unprofessional. Try not to be cursing. Just be professional. That's number one. Number two, in order to be promoted, your supervisors or your managers, they want to see you acting like a leader. You want to be a leader. You want to get a promotion. Act like a leader. Be a leader. Take control. Go above and beyond what your job duties are. So if you see something that needs to be done, how about you take the initiative to get it done? Don't wait around for someone to tell you to do it. Other people may sit around and you know wait for someone to tell them to do it or groan and mope and grope about it, but you should just go ahead. You know what your goals are. You know what you're striving to do. Go ahead and get it done. And then they'll see it. If they don't see it at the beginning, they'll see it eventually. They'll see your effort. If no one wants to work the drive-through, um, how about you just volunteer to work the drive-through? You need to get your skills up anyway. Go ahead and do it. And by acting like a leader, that doesn't mean that you're delegating to everyone else like what to do, trying to be all over them, trying to micromanage because you are not the supervisor, you're not the manager. So don't act like that, but just take initiative to go ahead and do the things that other people may not want to do and show up on time, come to work early. So when the supervisor, the manager get there, you'll be getting there a few minutes after, you'll be starting to set up things. Just look like you want to be a leader. So number three, be sociable at work. Don't just sit in a corner all the time or not talk to people. Show that you are a friendly person. Show that you're easy to work with at your job. Show that you know how to talk to people. Being sociable goes along with those leadership skills that management wants to see. You know, if your coworkers want to swap a shift with you, go ahead and swap if you can. Show that you are a team player. Show that um, you can get along with your uh, coworkers and show that you are sociable and a friendly person. So number four, know the steps that it takes for you to advance in your job position in your career. Before you even get hired, you should be asking in your interview, you know, what does it take in this role for me to move up to the next level. Have a clear understanding of what it takes and how you're going to accomplish those steps to move up. So if you're already in banking, if you have to have a certain amount of credit cards or a certain amount of loan goals, you need to know and be working towards those steps so that you can advance your career. You can be a step above the rest. Your coworkers may be, you know, playing around, not trying to reach their goals, but make sure you know what you need to do to reach your goals. Put together a packet if you have to, to make a checklist of the things that you're doing. If there's a certain time criteria, like at my um, credit union, 
I had to be in my role for six months before I could even move or do anything else within my position. But there are exceptions to the rule because even at my job, they kept telling me six months, six months, but there were other people getting promoted or moving to other branches before six months. So they really can do what they wanna do. They just tell you that, especially if there's a need but know the expectations of what you need to do to advance. Number five, this one should be a no brainer, but a lot of people do not do this. Let your management know that you're interested in moving up in your company. Some managers may not even know, they may not ask you. If it's a good manager, they will know, but some managers don't know that you may be interested in a different role in another department, or if you're interested in taking on leadership roles. So let them know you're interested and they'll actually be happy you did. I actually did that to one of my new managers that came in. I let her know like, yes, I'm interested in moving up. I wanna know what does it take to become a level two teller. She let me know what I had to do, which I already knew because I was on my stuff. Then she actually recommended me to go to certain trainings or if they were having events at our main location, I was one of the ones that got to go. So it's a lot of opportunities that come just by you letting your management know that you're interested in the position. And they will try to help you um, get to that next level because they wanna see you succeed. Number six, this kinda goes along with number five. Number six would be know how to take criticism and feedback, especially if it's constructive criticism, know how to take that information, how to listen first and apply it to your position. Once you let your manager know that you're interested in advancing, you may get some constructive criticism back that you're going to have to adapt and learn from. You can't be all like, oh, why you want to pick on me just because I want to move up? Or, you know, you can't go get mad about it. So you can ask them, you know, have a conversation with the management, ask them, okay, why they feel this way? Could you give me some examples of what I did that wouldn't be qualities of a leader? Or just ask them, how can I be better? What steps can I take? Or I'll try to come to work on time more often. I'll stop calling in because this is something that I really want to do. So learn how to take constructive criticism and feedback and apply it to your position so that you can be better. And that you, when you get in those leadership roles, that you will know how to talk to other people and how to give them constructive and positive feedback so that they can advance their careers. Number seven. Number seven would be track your accomplishments. So you need to be keeping a log of all your accomplishments that you are doing while you're in your current position. Your management may not keep track of all those accomplishments and the things that you're doing. So you need to take the initiative and track it yourself. And then when you go to your supervisors and your managers, you can be like, yes, so I had the most credit cards on this month or I received all of these five-star reviews from helping my customers or I went ahead and um, finished what you told me to do. I had a month to do it, I finished it in a week. You know, so track your accomplishments. It shows that you are productive and that you are keeping track of what you do and accomplish. And it lets your managers know that you are on your stuff so that you can move up and be promoted. So number eight would be to improve yourself and work on developing yourself so that you can get promoted and that you can be knowledgeable of the description or what you have to do in the position that you wanna be in. So by enhancing your skills and developing yourself, you may want to um, take the initiative and take classes that your job may be offering for you to get to the next level. A lot of jobs offer free trainings and free classes and modules on the computer that you can actually go ahead and sign up for and you can do a self-paced class and you can learn skills to get to the next level. They may have leadership modules or different things. That's what I did. I knew I wanted to be in a different position. So I enrolled in classes that were free, paid for by my credit union. Um, and they were at my local college and I did that one night a week. And those were leadership um, classes that I took because I wanted to better myself to be a better leader. So if it's areas or if you wanna go into another department, 
How about see if that department has any trainings or any classes coming up that are free, that may not interfere with your schedule, that you can take on your own time so that you can better your skills and knowledge of the positions that you want to be in. And then when it's time to speak to your management or what have you about advancing, they'll be like, well, what steps have you taken? And you can say, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. This is what I did, okay? Number nine, this is also something that I did. Like I said, a lot of these things I did it myself and that's how I got promoted. So number nine would be talk to recruiters that work for your company. So at my company, jobs are posted daily for vacant positions and there's a recruiter assigned to each um, job posting. So a lot of times I would reach out like it was some um, mortgage loan officer positions that I was interested in. I reached out to the recruiters and asked them, hey, for someone like me that doesn't have a lot of experience or I may not have um, the degree or licensing for this position, what does it take for me to get this position? Or what does it take for the recruiter to look at my application and have me as a prospect for this position? I needed to know. So they will tell you different things that they think or what you should have. Of course, the job description already tells you what they're looking for, but a lot of times they'll substitute those degrees for experience, um, certain amount of years of experience. So just ask the recruiter what they suggest you should do, if they think you should go ahead and get a license, do they think, you know, whatever they think, they will let you know. Or like my recruiter, she actually referred me to other positions to look for instead of the mortgage loan officer, which would be like a first step for me to apply to. And then I can apply for like a mortgage loan officer, which I did. Talk to the recruiters and a lot of the recruiters are really nice. Some of them may not be, but don't let that stop you. Just get another recruiter, talk to another recruiter. Number 10, the final one. So number 10 would be get to know the people in the department that you want to work for in my position as a teller we do have to talk to people in lending we talk to people in the fraud department we talk to people in operations we talk to a lot of different departments some of these people i end up talking to more than once i save their information we team all the time and I kind of asked them like, hey, what did you do to get the position that you're in? Especially if they haven't been in that position for a long time or if they haven't been with the company for a long time. Talk to them, kind of pick their brain. It's always good to show your interest. Maybe they can reach out to their supervisor when a position comes up. Be like, hey, I think she would be really good or he would be really good for this position. I see how much interest they have. They've learned a lot. I've been kind of coaching them and helping them. So it's good to just build relationships with other departments where you may want to go in, see and ask them what their role is like, what are the requirements of their position to see if it would even interest you. Um, ask about the pay if you feel like you can, you know, some people are private about that information, but um, definitely talk and reach out to people in the departments you want to work with, build those relationships and show that you're interested. And then a bonus. Bonus one is be good at your job. That's definitely a major one because by you being good in your current position, it shows your management that you will be good for another level or a promotion or another position. Let them see that you come to work on time, that you are willing to stay over, that you take the initiative to better yourself in classes, you know how to receive criticism, you know how to, you know all, everything that your role entails, make sure you know how to do your job, your current job correctly. Because if you don't know how to do your own current job, they're not even gonna look at you for a promotion or for another job. And that's facts. So, all these steps plus my bonus, this will get you that promotion you're looking for. And on my next video, I'm going to tell y'all about my new position and my new role in banking. So like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on my next video. Thanks for watching.